I am continuing my reading. What I'm doing in this series is to read through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in a chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be skipping around a bit as I move along. We continue in Nehemiah. This will be chapter 6. Now we're building the wall, we're repairing it, but we also have, in the last chapter, we had to turn loose all of the Jews who had been sold into slavery and return all the land that had been mortgaged as is required by the law of Moses. So now, chapter 6. Sanballat engages in intrigue against Nehemiah and the building of the wall. Jews finish construction of the wall. Now it came to pass when Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem the Arabian and the rest of our enemies heard that I had builded the wall and that there was no breach left therein, though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates. Then Sanballat and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me mischief. And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I am doing a great work, so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you? Yet they sent unto me four times after this sort, and I answered them after the same manner. What we have here is they see that the wall is being built, these guys, Sanballat, Tobiah, and Geshem, and they don't want the wall built. Now the wall is actually pretty much fully done. The only thing left to do is hang the doors and the gates. You've got to hang up the, the gates themselves. And so now to prevent this final construction, they're trying to lure Nehemiah out of the city. Because remember, Nehemiah had told everybody, we're staying in the city, we're going to camp and sleep in the city until the work is done. Where nobody leaves the city until the work's done. So now they're trying to lure Nehemiah out. Saying, oh, come on out, let's talk, we'll negotiate, we'll, we'll figure things out. But their plan is to get him out of the city so that they can have him assassinated, thinking that if they can kill Nehemiah, that they can put a halt to the work. Now, he, is, he is the driving force motivating everybody to the work. And so if you kill him, you can prevent the completion of the work. But I like his response. Sorry, I'm engaged in a great work here. I can't pause. If I, I can't come out to you and pause the work. You're going to have to wait till I'm done. Verse 5. Then sent Sanballat his servant unto me in like manner the fifth time with an open letter in his hand, wherein was written, It is reported among the heathen, and Gashmu saith it, that thou and the Jews think to rebel, for which cause thou buildest the wall, that thou mayest be their king, according to these words. And thou hast also appointed prophets to preach of thee at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah. And now shall it be reported to the king according to these words? Come now, therefore, and let us take counsel together. Then I sent unto him, saying, There are no such things done as thou sayest, but thou feignest them out of thine own heart. For they all made us afraid, saying, Their hands shall be weakened from the work, that it be not done. Now therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. Afterward I came unto the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the son of Mehetabil, who was shut up, and he said, Let us meet together in the house of God within the temple, and let us shut the doors of the temple, for they will come to slay thee, yea, in the night will they come to slay thee. And I said, Should such a man as I flee? And who is there that being as I am would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. And lo, I perceived that God had not sent him, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me, for Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. Therefore was he hired, that I should be afraid, and do so, and sin, and that they might have matter for an evil report, that they might reproach me. My God, think thou upon Tobiah and Sanballat, according to these their works, and on the prophetess Noadiah, and the rest of the prophets that would have put me in fear. These are all the intrigues that people are using to try and prevent the walls being finished. See, they tried to lure him out. When they couldn't, they sent basically a threat saying, we are going to send to the king all these reports about you rebelling and you declaring yourself king and saying that it's a rumor going around and you're going to get in big trouble for it. And Nehemiah sends back and says, it's all a lie. You know it's a lie. The king will know it's a lie. I'm not going to listen to you, basically. And then we have this guy, Shemaiah. He comes, he comes to Shemaiah. This is a guy in the city and... So I said, let's go hide out in the temple because they're going to try and kill you at night. They're going to bring in assassins during the night. And the only place you'll be safe is in the temple. But Nehemiah, he's not a Levite. 
And he's definitely not descended from Aaron. So he's not allowed in the temple. And he knows that. And he says, look, God's going to bless me. I, I, I'm not going to flee from my enemies. God, God's got my back. And this guy was trying to find a way to condemn Nehemiah. He wanted to find a way to weaken his influence among the Jews. If he could have persuaded him to go into the temple, the Jews would have seen that as a great, great insult, a great iniquity among them because he's not allowed in the temple. And it would have given them some way of breaking the influence he had over the people. And then we talk about at the end there, Noadiah and the rest of the prophets that would, have, that would have put me in fear. These are people that are being hired by the enemies of the Jews to give false prophecies to make the Jews afraid to finish the wall. They're trying to scare them into stopping the work. And Nehemiah is saying, we're not listening to them. We are going to continue the work. And so we have all these intrigues to try and prevent the construction of the wall. It's kind of ridiculous, really. But let us finish this out. We are verse 15. So the wall was finished in the twenty and fifth day of the month Elul, in fifty and two days. And it came to pass that when all our enemies heard thereof, and all the heathen that were about us saw these things, they were much cast down in their own eyes, for they perceived that this work was wrought of our God. Moreover, in those days the nobles of Judah sent many letters unto Tobiah, and the letters of Tobiah came unto them. For there were many in Judah sworn unto him, because he was the son-in-law of Shechaniah, the son of Ara, And his son, Johanan, had taken the daughter of Meshulam, the son of Berechiah. Also they reported his good deeds before me, and uttered my words to him. And Tobiah sent letters to put me in fear. So, the, the walls are constructed. It takes almost two months. That, that is a fast work. And it's because they divided the work up like they did, you know, each, each family took a section, they built it up. 52 days to finish the work. And then we have this other, th more intrigue it talked about in that we have the nobles of Judah are kind of, they got family connections to this Tobiah guy. And so they're, they're in a correspondence with him. And through this correspondence he is again trying to scare the Jews into stopping the work, but it doesn't work. Now, I do want to say the reason that rebuilding Jerusalem is so significant, there are a few events in the history of the world that change history, that the entire course of history alters with that one event. Of course, you had the creation, the fall of Adam, the flood, the Tower of Babel, the exodus of the Jews from Egypt, then the destruction of Jerusalem. This altered everything. Jews were scattered everywhere. History changed. It is one of the focal points of history. And the surrounding heathens, they know the importance of this. Well, say, Satan knows the importance of Jerusalem. And he is doing everything he can to persuade the heathens to put a stop to it. Because he knows if Jerusalem is rebuilt, that is the next step in the, in the prophesied history of the world. is the rebuilding of Jerusalem. They aren't, these men are fighting Jerusalem because they don't want the competition. And they know, and as I say, when it got built, and they realized none of their, their threats, their intrigues, nothing worked to prevent the building of the city. And it says they knew it was the power of God. These guys don't want the power of God there. They all know that God is the, the real power. But they think if they can keep the Jews out of the area, then God's power will not be made manifest against them. That's why they're trying to stop the construction. That's why people have always been against the Jews, because they are God's chosen people. They are the people of the covenant. I forgot, there is a brief Joseph Smith translation here. In verse 11, the King James says, And I said, Should such a man as I flee? And who is there that, being as I am, would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. Now this was Nehemiah saying, I'm not allowed in the temple. I'm not going to go in. I'm not going to violate God's law to save my life. This is what Joseph Smith says. This is his translation. And I said, should such a man as I flee, and who is mine enemy, that such a man as I would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. Just a very simple clarification. He's saying here, who can threaten me enough that would drive me to violate the law of my God? There is no enemy powerful enough to influence me into violating the law of my God. I will not go into the temple. That's what he's saying. Now we also have this in verse 13. The King James says, 
Therefore was he hired, that I should be afraid, and do so, and sin, and that they might have matter for an evil report, that they might reproach me. Joseph Smith corrects this. Therefore should I be afraid of him he hired, and do so, as he said, and sin, and that they might have me for an evil report, that they might reproach me. It's an interesting way of putting it, in that it's no longer just a statement that he hi- he was hired against me to create a bet a evil report. But that's all there, so. Anyways, we will continue Nehemiah until we finish it. I think there's 13 chapters, so we got a fair amount left. And we will see you in the next chapter.